What's going on guys? It is that time again. I did this video two years ago and now I'm doing it again. It is the Marvel Cinematic Universe out of the all 17 films in the MCU from worst to first. I'm going to go through all 17 films, explain which ones I like from worst to first. You know, my list is probably going to be different than yours, but that's okay because all films are subjective. I can't wait to get into this. I'm very excited. So let's see what I got. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in to my Just My Opinion episode number three to where I rank all the MCU films from my uh, worst to first. But before I get into my list, go ahead and uh, help your boy out. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Become one of my subscribers. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. And also, give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. Now, like I said in my intro, you know, I, I did this two years ago and it was a lot easier than it is now because I think at that time it was maybe like 12 films, but now we have 17. I'm shooting this right after Thor Ragnarok. This is Saturday night. Actually, what time is it? It is 12.55, so it's actually Sunday morning. And I have everything laid out right here. Now, my top five or top six was very easy. And then my bottom four was very easy as well, too. But the ones in the middle, that was hard. I would just sit down like, man, you know, how am I going to rank these? And I just kind of had to sit there and ponder for a while and just really go over each film mentally. I really didn't feel like rewatching all of them again. That would take like a weekend or whatever. But, uh, you know, for the most part, I, I think this is solid. I'm proud of my order. And, um, you know, after we're done, after you see, you know, how I rank mine's worst to first, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below what you think, whether you agree or you disagree. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Now, number 17, the worst film in the entire MCU. It still was entertaining, but it's still somewhat entertaining, but it's still the worst to me. And you probably will agree with me. And that is 2010, directed by John Favreau, and that is Iron Man 2. Yes, Iron Man 2. Very, excuse me, very excited about this movie, but I was very, very disappointed because with Iron Man 1, it was just so fantastic. And then we have the sequel. You was hoping the sequel was going to be better, um, but it was not. There was just so much wrong with this film. Um, I did not like how War Machine got his uh, suit. Um, that was very frustrating. I hated the War Machine versus Iron Man uh, battle that they had in the in the weight room and they were throwing weights at each other. That was kind of tired and ridiculous. Uh, there was some continuity issues as well, which I did not care about at the very end of this movie where we had. Um, uh, Hogan, Happy Hogan fighting in the facility or whatever. Uh, you know, he was trying to do boxing and he was biting the guy's ear. And that, that was just stupid and corny. Um, a lot was taken away from the story and the plot because they just kind of tried to shoehorn Black Widow in. And I have nothing against Black Widow, but it just took away from the story. I can go on and on about this movie, um, but it was just really disappointing to me. Now, it did have one of the best action scenes at the very end where they had Iron Man and War Machine back to back, you know, in their Iron Man suits. You know, shooting all those drones, that was badass. I love that. Uh, but for the most part, this movie was highly uh, disappointing. And that is why it is the worst in the MCU coming in at number 17. All right. Next on the list is another movie. Well, no, this one is not directed by John Favreau. Uh, but it has another familiar character from the last movie I just held up. It's being directed by Shane Black, who did Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. And that is Iron Man 3. Man, I was even more pumped to see this movie because this came out with May 2013. It was the first movie after uh, the Avengers that came out May 2012. And there were some redeeming qualities in this movie as well, too. Like the airplane scene um, on Air Force One, 
where you know Tony was in his Iron Man suit and they was doing the barrel monkey thing. That scene was freaking badass and I loved it. It was intense. You know, you kind of know everybody's going to survive, but it was still good. I really did enjoy it. I remember earlier, was it the end of January or the very beginning of February when they had the Super Bowl? There was some scenes that were still that scene. They showed it in the Super Bowl and like the whole like 75 percent of the scene. I'm like, why are you giving away so much of the movie? You know, that's just very frustrating. Um, but this was still good. The ending battle scene was extremely disappointing with all the robots and or all the uh, Iron Man suits or whatever. Um, you know, that that scene could have just been way, way better. And let me back up to like the airplane scene or whatever. Like, OK, this the thing is, thousands, the plane is thousands of feet in the air. How did Iron Man get into the suit without this? I mean, get into the plane without the uh, without the plane losing cabin pressure or whatever. I don't know how planes work, but I just didn't see how that was uh, how that was possible. Um, also, um, one thing at the very end of that scene where he saved everybody and dropped them in the water, he did like some epic pose or whatever. And that was great. I love that. But then um that truck came and just knocked the suit in half into all these pieces or whatever. And that really frustrated me. It ruined the entire moment. And when you do things like that, it makes the armor seem really cheap and fragile and frail and whatnot. And that's not cool. Like the armor is supposed to be like strong and badass. And I really just didn't care for the remote control access, you know, of the suit or whatever. And also in this movie, everybody was in the suit. Everybody was in the suit. Like um, we got the, the the what was it, the extremist people was in the suit at one time. The president was in the suit at one time. Pepper was in the suit at one time. I don't I don't want to see anybody in the Iron Man suits except for Rhodey and Iron Man unless, you know, it makes sense. And they're trying to just save the day or whatever. But. This, this movie was just all over the place with plot and everything. And, you know, um, this was disappointing as well, too. All right. Next, coming in at number 15 in the MCU and almost gave it away. This one is directed by Alan Taylor, who did a couple of episodes of season of Game of Thrones. And that is Thor, the Dark World. Man, I was just so frustrated with this. Malekith, the Malekith, the elf or whatever, like he was just such a weak villain. Um, a lot of the action was weak in this movie. You know, I didn't really like Kate Dennings at all. Like, what were you doing? Like in this, like, why were you in this movie? I'm so glad you was not in Thor Ragnarok. Like, you just need to die. I like uh, Kate Dennings as an actress. She's a great actress. Uh, she's funny in other movies, but in this, like, the, the like this, the the uh, I said this two years ago, but in this movie, New York was not getting uh, invaded. That wasn't at stake. The whole world wasn't at stake, but the whole freaking nine rams was at stake. And at the very end of the movie, they're trying to joke around and stuff. And she's playing, you know, doing makeout sessions with that one guy. And we don't know who he is. And, you know, from the technology with the with the ether or whatever, like a lot of the objects is floating. One guy threw a car. We got these stupid elves running in place that just didn't pose a th threat at all. They couldn't shoot. They were shooting like stormtroopers. I mean, they were just like empty characters with empty threats. And it didn't go anywhere. And just like Jeremy John said in his rev uh, review for this movie a long time ago, and I will remember, like the 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 last battle scene with Malekith the Accursed and Thor was weak. It was they weren't even really fighting. It was like portal combat. This portals going. That's what Jeremy John said in his review, and I love that. I love that phrase. But you know, it's just like it was just weak, and I just didn't like it. And the, the story was whack. I never bought the relationship between him and Jane Foster. You know, and. I remember watching the special features for like I remember no before I say that I remember in the trailers uh, when people were getting trying to get hyped for this movie somebody was like man I bet Jane Foster is going to try to come up with some way to defeat Malekith and that's exactly what she did and if you watch the special features for this it's so it's so disappointing that they did not go through with this decision but Thor uh, you, you know he holds up Mjolnir and brings down lightning and thunder and blasts the bad guys. And OK, if you try to do that against Malekith when he has it either, it won't work. But every 5000 years, that's when the portals align, like all the stars align or whatever, all the nine rams align with the portal, whatever. And what they said that they was going to do was have Thor gather lightning from all nine rams at one time and shoot Malekith with a super duper lightning bolt. And that probably would have killed him. That would have been freaking badass. But of course, they decided to have Jane Foster, you know, come and save the day and you know, I, I really didn't like that. And, you know, this movie was disappointing. So we got 17, 16 and 15 next on the list coming in at number 14 um, out of my MCU films from worst to first is the first Thor, Thor, 
just Thor, Thor one. There is no subtitle for this. Uh, this was pretty good. It was a fish out of water story tale. Um, I, I pretty, I, I mean, I liked it. It was fair. Um, I was kind of frustrated too with this one and the last one because I didn't feel like with both of these movies that we really got to really got to see Thor kick some butt. Uh, you know, but it was it was an okay movie. It had, you know had some comedic elements and whatnot. Uh, we got to see Loki and all that before he was in Avengers. Um, him and Jane Foster in this movie, you know, they were not lovers. They really just came across as friends. We, you know, we got to see that. We got to see the, uh, what is the, I forgot the, um, uh, the little robot that guards Odin's throne or whatever. Um, you know what I'm talking about, but he fought, it was so, it was coming out 2011. It was, it was six years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, this is cool. I did enjoy it. I think this came out May of 2011 because Captain America Civil, not Captain America, Captain America, the first Avenger came out july of that year in 2011 but you know this comes in at number 14 all right guys got the first four out the way those are the last four now you may be surprised out of this next pick right here and this is where things kind of did get kind of hard for me then the, like you know where they rank or whatever but this one came out uh, a year ago starring benedict cumberbatch and yes that is dr strange um, I was, uh, I did enjoy some things in this movie, but at the same time, I was disappointed with a lot. Reason being is, um, the passage of time in this movie was like all over the place. Um, I did not like that at all. We really didn't get a good account of how much time passed by from when Stephen Strange, you know, broke his hands, you know, to the time that, you know, he became the Sorcerer Supreme. They kind of just seemed like they fast forwarded over that whole part. And he just got all of his skills too fast. Now, I know that they was kind of trying to portray him as a prodigy in this movie and how he adapted so well, you know, and, you know, he, you know, was a very focused man. And he got his PhD in, in uh, surgery or whatever and biology, chemistry, uh, whatever. He was a surgeon. So he knew how to study. But at the same time, like this is the mystic arts. I mean, I, I kind of wish he was training with mystic arts for like a, a few years or something like that. But it, it seemed like he was able to get everything down in like six months. Um, also, the training sequence uh, with him and Chichuel Ejiofor was horrible. That was horrible. The fight scenes in this movie were just raggedy and just cheap and just not convincing at all. I was really uh, pissed off about that. There was times in this movie where they were just trying to be funny too much to where we're in want where he was just trying to steal the books um, out of the thing. And he was using this little ring or whatever and reaching his hand through. I, I, I just that wasn't funny to me. Um, other parts in this movie where they were just trying to be serious when he was fighting, uh, what is the guy's name? Um, what is his name? What is his name? His name is, um, Mads Mikkelsen or whatever. Um, when he was fighting him in the middle of the movie and then the red cape was like wrapping over Dr. Strange's face and pulling him this way. I don't want to see crap like that, you know, and doing a serious fight, like be, make the fight seem serious or whatever and they just wasn't doing that or whatever something else that was just really stupid in this movie to me it was just incredibly dumb was at the very beginning where uh mass mickelson character or whatever came through and they cut the librarian's head off or whatever and he had like all of his henchmen or whatever and they're all ganging up ganging around and he's like open it like seriously okay they're trying to get that book to get like the dark magic or whatever and he's like you know they're infiltrating you know the facility and he's like flipping through the pages trying to find the page and he just rips out two pages why not just take the whole damn book like really i don't understand that just you're wasting time or whatever that doesn't make any sense just grab the whole book and run or whatever i mean like that's just time that you could have saved i'm just like this is stupid and then you had like every henchman i would have been like everybody grab at least one or two books each you know what i'm saying like you know everybody grab a book Let's get as much knowledge as we possibly can. Like, I'm just like sitting there just like, oh, my gosh, this is dumb. Like, I, I just it was just stupid. And I, I really just didn't like it. Um, you know, I could nitpick that whole movie. I'm not going to give a review for the whole movie. But, you know, there was some. Oh, and it also at the very end, like like when Wong or what, when uh, Mass Mickelson's character was powering up and at the very end, uh, you know, where they were trying to take over the Sanctum Sanctum in Asia or whatever. Wong was everybody grab a weapon and defend this, you know, council with your lives or this, defend the sanctum with your lives or whatever. We don't get to see them fight. They do an ugly little pose of martial arts that they can't really do that well. And then the next thing you know, it cuts away and comes back 
And then they're all got their butt whooped and Wong is in a wall or something dead over here. And it's just like, OK, I wanted to kind of see that fight or whatever. But, you know, um, we didn't get to see that. And that was a little disappointing. Now, do I want to change this at the last minute, this order? Man, I'm looking at this. This, this. this was tough to give this specific order or whatever. But oh, well, we're just going to keep on going. All right. So that was 17. I got to get my numbers right. 17. 16 wait a minute 17 16 15 uh 14 13 all right coming in at number 12 this was the second film in the whole mcu came out uh may of the june of 2008 the incredible hulk and this of course did not star mark ruffalo this started edward norton and initially i was so disappointed because we didn't get to see edward norton come back but now i honestly like uh mark ruffalo a lot better and a lot of people crap on this movie, and I really don't understand why. I really, you know, really did enjoy it or whatever. I mean, Edward Norton did a great job. Um, Liv Tyler did as well. Uh, uh, what is his name? Uh, William Hurt kind of was screaming in this movie, but Tim Roth as the Abomination. The Abomination. I mean, he was a great villain. I mean, I liked him. And in the comics and the, you know, TV shows and old movie cartoon movies and stuff like that, the Abomination is initially stronger than the Hulk. But what makes them different is Abomination cannot get stronger like the anger he gets, but the Hulk can. So that potentially makes the Hulk stronger or whatever. But uh, but uh, Abomination was great, and I do love the stages of his transformation in this movie. It was great. I do wish we could have got a little bit more action towards the end. I mean, it was great to see him put you know rip the car in half and uh, you know use them as punching gloves and stuff. But we could have got a lot more out of this. And something that frustrated me is, again, I hate when they put stuff in the trailers that's not in the movie. And in the trailers, there was this one key scene in the trailers where Hulk had came down um, in, uh, I forgot what city town that was in, but he came down in front of this black mom and this black boy or whatever. And they would like, he came down and crashed and they were just looking up and Hulk was growing and they're just kind of looking up like this and they're just like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And this wasn't in the movie or whatever. And that was just something I was looking forward to. And it also was not in the phase one briefcase or whatever, the deleted scenes. I guess they just locked that in the vault for themselves. But I really did love this movie. Uh, well, I liked it a lot. And this one comes in at number uh, number 12. All right. So we got, um, you know, I, so, so far we got Iron Man uh, 2 at number 17. We got Iron Man 3 at 16. Um, we got Thor the Dark World at 15, um, Thor at 14, Doctor Strange at uh, 12, and um, the Hulk at 11. Wait a minute, I, I cannot do math. Hold on, goodness gracious. I'm all over the place. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Okay. All right, coming in at number 11. Man, the, oh, I cannot, I cannot stress enough how much I was looking forward to this movie. I was looking forward to this movie. My gosh, if I, if I saw this movie and died the next day, let me knock on some wood or something. I don't want to die no time soon or whatever. I would have been happy. But coming in at number 11 is Avengers Age of Ultron. Um, I did enjoy this movie. It had a lot of great things about it, but it had a lot of things that frustrated me as well. Like that opening scene where all the Avengers was kicking butt, you know, that was great. I love that. But at the same time, I thought the introduction to Ultron was just completely rushed. And I was really frustrated about that. They just kind of skipped over the whole part. You know, I was really frustrated. Um, I really wasn't impressed with Quicksilver and uh, not Black Widow, but Scarlet Witch in this movie. Scarlet Witch did do a lot better in the next movie. Uh, but in this, you know, we got to see Vision. Uh, what was also disappointing is, you know, the scene where Thor goes into that well or whatever. We didn't get to see that because the powers at Disney wanted to boss haul Joss Whedon so much to where he ran off to D.C., you know, in this movie, just not knowing what the hell they was talking about. That form scene was too long. Uh, but this was still, a, you know, a pretty, you know, good film. I did enjoy it for the most part, um, but it could have been a lot better. All right. Coming in at number 10 is Guardians of the Galaxy, which what, when did, what year did this come out? Uh, I want to say. I don't remember. I think this came out August of 2014. Is that it? Directed by James Gunn. James Gunn is a great director. Uh, he did Slither. He also did, uh, what is that movie called? It was a superhero movie. Uh, it was a realistic superhero movie. Like, because Kick-Ass 1 
And another movie is like the most realistic superhero movies ever made. And I can't think of it right now for the life of me. But James Gunn did this. It was a great movie. It's a great introduction to the Guardians of the Galaxy. And I really did enjoy it. I don't know why my nose is itching so much. Um, I love Benicio Del Toro as the collector in this movie. That was great, too. Um, you know, Jax was great. You know, Gamora, Rocket Raccoon, Groot, voiced by Vin Diesel was great. And also Chris Pratt. That was lovely. I love the prison scene. I love pretty much everything about this movie except for uh, Ronan the Accuser. Gosh, he was such a horrible villain. Just like, oh gosh, like he it, it just sucks. It's like cleansing. And he just tried to talk like that. And just like there, there was just no threat. Something that frustrated me in this movie is the continuity in the battles. When Drax the Destroyer was getting frustrated on the Nowhere Planet, um, that was the, the head of the Celestial, and he made the signal to call Ronan the Accuser to, to fight him. Okay, so we saw Rocket. Um, was it Rocket, Gamora, and uh, Chris Pratt in the pot in the pods? Groot could not fit in the pods, and Rocket was like, "Groot, you have to stay here. You can't fit." But then Ronan the Accuser was fighting Drax. So where was Groot that whole time? Was he just standing there doing nothing? Why wasn't you over there helping uh, Drax, you know, fight Ronan the Accuser? And that was very frustrating. Um, and I noticed that. And I remember being very, really, t- uh, really turned off in this movie. Uh, something else about this movie is now it was explained in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. But at the time, it just left too many open questions as to why Chris Pratt was able to hold the Infinity Stone. You know, at the time it was frustrating, but it was explained in Guardians of the Galaxy Part Two. Um, but you know, this does come in at number. I can't do my. I, I keep forgetting the order I'm in. Hold on, one, two, three. Hold on, goodness gracious, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. So Guardians of the Galaxy is coming in at number ten, and uh, yeah, so we got that there. All right, coming in at number nine. So this is nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Yeah, okay. Coming in at number nine is, and this may surprise you as well too. I really did like this. Uh, this came out, I think, July or August of 2011. That is Joe Johnston's Captain America: The First Avenger. Now I'm pretty sure a lot of you do not agree with me on this right here, but this movie was damn good to me. I really did like it. The only thing that I did not like was when Captain America finally... It was just a great story to me. And when Captain America finally... Uh, Chris Evans, uh, uh, Steve Rogers, finally got his costume or whatever. I mean, he went on a few missions before he got his full costume. But as soon as he got his costume, I wanted him to go on a mission like that and then get the montage. But it jumped straight to the montage. And that kind of like frustrated me. I was like, kind of like, oh, man, that kind of sucks. And then also um, the Red Skull at times just kind of seemed a little comical. You know, at one time he was like, you're failing me. You know, I just really didn't care for that. And also I wasn't more hand to hand in the last battle. But other than that, um, I really did enjoy this movie. And Captain America, the first Avenger does come in at number eight. All right, guys. So we got those out of the way. Um, now we have the last, uh, how many is left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, we got the first nine out the way and now we're down to the bottom eight. And this one, next one is coming in and I keep losing. Well, I think this is number, uh, hold on. Um, yeah, hold on. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, hold on. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. All right. Coming in at number 8 that came out May of this year, and that is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I see I do have it also on 4K uh, Ultra HD. A lot of people are probably going to disagree with me. They probably like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 a lot better than Part um, uh, Part 2. Um, but I didn't have any problems with this. I, I remember when a lot of reviews came out for this movie at first and people were crapping on it. And I went to go see it myself. I was like, I don't see what all the fuss is about. It's funny to me. Um, you know, I, I, there's really just not too much that I can complain about in this movie. They could have took it a little more serious towards the end, but I really did enjoy this movie. And I was laughing my behind off. And, you know, I really did enjoy it. And now that I'm just holding this up, I really cannot think of anything that just... I mean, it just wasn't freaking amazing, but I, there, I just really didn't have that many complaints about it. It was a fun movie, and I laughed, 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 you know. So, 
I just really love the art on this too. I mean, this is just like a, a beautiful um, contrast of color, and I like that as well. So coming in at number uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Coming in at number seven was it came out this year as well, and that is Spider Man Homecoming. Uh, this is pretty good too. It has one of the better villains in the whole MCU as well, with uh, Michael Keaton as the Vulture. Um, you know, this movie did have some frustrating things in it because that scene at the end in the trailer where Iron Man and Spider-Man were swinging into uh, the screen that was not in the movie. Um, but I did enjoy I did enjoy this uh, quite a bit or whatever. One thing that I did not like, though, is that Spider-Man is known for swinging through high buildings. And John Watts, the director of this movie, did not want to include that. And I think in an interview, he was like, well, I was just trying to be different from the other Spider-Man movies. I mean, I understand that. But you don't take away what makes the character gold and platinum or whatever. I mean, Spider-Man is supposed to be swinging around high buildings. And, um, you know, Tom Holland did do a good job. Of course, this movie, you know, wasn't just freaking amazing. Spider-Man 2 with Dr. Octopus by Sony is still the best Spider-Man to me. And this comes in at number uh, two or whatever overall with Spider-Man. But, you know, this is a Sony picture. It's still in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But, you know, this one does come in at number seven. All right, guys, um, coming in at number six. And I was so pissed off initially when they chose the Swiss directors. Uh, I remember at the time when the news came out, it ruined my Friday because the news dropped that Edgar Wright was not going to be a part of this movie anymore. And I remember I was having a Street Fighters Assassin's Fist watch party that night and I was bummed. But not coming in number six is oh, is uh, Ant-Man. Um, I really did enjoy this movie. It was fun. Paul Rudd is great in this movie. So is Michael Douglas. I really don't have anything to complain about this movie. I, I was just so not looking forward to it because I wanted Edgar Wright to do this, but Peyton Reed did come through and he did a great job with Ant-Man. I can't wait for Ant-Man and the Wasp that comes out May of 2000, no, July of 2018, a few months or a couple of months after Avengers Affinity War next year. Uh, but I really did enjoy Ant-Man, and this comes in at number six. All right, guys, we got all those out of the way. We got 12 out of the way. Now we are down to the top five in the whole MCU. Uh, and what's left? You know, we got Iron Man, Avengers, Thor, Ragnarok, Captain America, Civil War, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. What order am I going to put it in? Well, coming in at number five, and this is the top five out of the whole MCU, I cannot show you a Blu-ray DVD because the movie just came out a few days ago. And that is Thor the Dark, uh, not Thor the Dark World, hell no. Thor Ragnarok. I've seen the movie twice and I really did enjoy it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was far beyond Thor 1 and 2. But Thor Ragnarok, it was a great movie. And I really did enjoy it. Um, I've seen it twice, like I just said. Uh, I, initially, I really didn't care for the first five minutes. And I had some nitpicks here and there. But it was a fun movie. And I really did get to see Thor kick some butt. Excuse me. I got to see Hulk kick some butt. I got to see Hela kick some butt. I got to see Valkyrie kick some butt. It was just a lot of kicking butt in this movie. And I really did enjoy it. Uh, so Thor Ragnarok comes in at number five. And uh, I wonder where you're going to put your Thor Ragnarok because mine is number five. All right, guys. Top four. Uh, last but not least, coming in at number four is Marvel's The Avengers that came out May of 2012. Oh, uh, man. This was just like near a masterpiece to me. Um, I really did enjoy it. The story was great. Um, the only thing that I wanted more in this was more Hulk at, at, at the end. Of course, we did get to see him smash Loki a bit and jump around the buildings and whatnot. It was great. I do remember uh, I was frustrated in the movie with how Hawkeye getting hypnotized, but he came through at the very end. And he did his thing. You know, that was great or whatever. But I do remember just kind of saying to myself, why does Loki know so much about how to take down the Avengers? It really doesn't make any sense. And if you watch the special features or deleted scenes, there is a or an uh, extended scenes. There is an extended scene where Hawkeye is explaining to Loki when he's hypnotized how to take down the Avengers. But for some and that makes sense. But for some reason, they decided to take it out of the movie. And I don't understand why they should have kept that in. But, um, you know, this was great. I mean, that ending battle scene was just epic and I loved it. Uh, I can watch that over and over and over again. And, um, you know, this is a great film and it comes in at number four out of the whole mcu all right guys 
Now we're down to the top three in the whole MCU. And coming in at number three is Captain America Civil War. Man, hold up. I was so excited for this movie. We got the debut for the new Spider-Man in this movie. We got the debut for Black Panther in this movie. We got to see, you know, Team Cap versus Team Iron Man. And it was fantastic. That airport battle scene is one of the best action scenes and not comic book history, but all action movie um, history, period. I mean, it was just so dope. I love the action in this movie. And I said I love the action because the story uh, was not the best. And like part of um, the guys playing in this movie, what is his name? Um, I forgot. I'm doing so much right now. Daniel Brule, who was, uh, God, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. The uh, I forgot his villain, Zemo or whatever. You know, his plan didn't make sense to me. It was this dumb luck, you know, and that was very frustrating to me um because it just you know it didn't make any sense you know like how did she know that iron man was going to show up at the end and i can go on and on i'm not going to give a whole review of this film i'm just giving my ratings but even though the story was la it wasn't as good in this movie the action made up for it and that's why captain america civil war does come in at number uh three and with this being a captain america movie of course captain america got the shine but every other character got the shine too and it just why i'm giving it number three all right, guys, we only have two left now. Two left. Two left. What am I going to rank it? Uh, we got Iron Man 1 and Captain America 1 and Soldier left. And uh, coming in at number two is Captain America The Winter Soldier. I love this movie. This movie was like nearly flawless to me. Flawless. It's freaking flawless. I loved it. The story, even though the action was better in Captain America Civil War, the action in this was still dope as hell, but the story was just so great. And the villain with the re uh, revelation that Hydra has infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. and they've been pulling all these strings, you know, all the, these 70 years, it was just great. And um, we got to see, what is his name? Um, gosh, Robert Redford as uh, Alexander Pierce. He was a great villain in this movie. And uh, I really do appreciate everything that he had to offer. I had just a couple of nitpicks in this movie that took like five, six. Each. They were just nitpicks. But, you know, I, I do love this movie. And that's why it's coming in at number two. And guys, uh, last but not least, you probably already know what it is now from Process of Elimination. But it was the first movie in the whole MCU coming out uh, May of 2008. And to me, it is still the best in the whole MCU. And that is Iron Man 1. I don't have a sleeve for this, but... This movie is perfect to me. It's a perfect 10. I don't have, I have zero complaints out of this whole movie. And like this came out what, uh, nine years ago, right? Cause it's 2017 now, nine years ago. And up until like a year ago, I had, you know, I couldn't find any flaws in this movie. Somebody pointed something out to me. I, you know, of course this whole thing is spoilers. I'm 30 minutes in now. I'm talking about spoilers now, but Obadiah Stane should have deleted that video. And I don't I never thought about that till like a year ago. But this movie is still a flawless to me. If it's not, it's like a nine point nine. But I'm gonna give this ten. It's just a perfect introduction to the MCU, and it's a perfect movie. I do miss T uh, Terrence Howard as War Machine as Rhodey. I, I do want him still over um, Don Cheeto, but of course he's never gonna come back. But I love Iron Man. This is just a perfect movie. I may even watch this tonight or whatever because it's so great and I haven't seen it in a while. But guys, that is um, just you know. Uh, my opinion for the MCU so let me go ahead and do a rundown again just real quick you know of the order of uh, of these movies and so you guys can go to bed because I'm sure you're um, very tired no I'm just being silly or whatever uh, but coming in at number 17 is uh, Iron Man 2 uh, number 16 is um, Iron Man 3 Number 15 is Thor the Dark World. Number 14 is uh, Thor, the first Thor. Uh, so was it 17, 16, 15, 14? What's 13? I forgot. Oh, 13 is uh, Doctor Strange. Go ahead and get Doctor Strange out the way. Uh, coming in at number 12 um, is The Incredible Hulk. Uh, coming in at number 11 is Avengers Age of Ultron. Coming in, oh shoot, I forgot again what number I was on. God, it. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. Coming in at number 10 is uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Coming in at number 9 is Captain America the First Avenger. 
Number eight is um Damn, I forgot what order. Coming in at number eight is Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Coming in at number seven is Spider-Man Homecoming. Coming in at number six is Ant-Man. Number five is Thor Ragnarok. Number four is The Avengers, Marvel's The Avengers. Number three is Captain America Civil War. Uh, number two is Captain America Winter Soldier. And number one is Iron Man, the first that started the whole MCU. But guys, I'm up here knocking over the microphone. That is just my opinion. What is your order from the worst to first, the worst to best in the whole MCU out of all these 17 films? You know, do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Have you seen all these films? Do you want to see them? Well, let me know what your list is. List it down below. Seriously, listen. Let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation about this. Let's have some fun, you know, and just let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide. You can uh, click the bell so you can be notified when I do make uploads. You can also um, look me up on my website, justmyopinion.net, bookmark it. I do have written reviews for films, justmyopinion.net. And guys, you can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And you can I've also made it easy for providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to Just My Opinion, episode number three, where I rank the MCU films from worst to first or worst to best. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace. <laughs>